Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, here on the U.S. side, we have Adam Parker from the University of Iowa, who I will introduce in just a moment. Um, but for those of you in India and the rest of the world, thank you again. Uh, today's topic is going to be inside and outside the classroom experience. You are joining this webinar that is hosted by Gen Next Education and the International Knowledge Center. For those of you who have joined us in the past, you already know that Gen Next is a US-based company out of St. Paul, Minnesota, started by Girish Balola, who was an Indian student himself who came from Bangalore to study in the US, and started the International Knowledge Center, which is based in Bangalore. But we also have staff in Chennai and Mumbai. And I'm being told that there are no visuals. Just one moment. I apologize. Yay! <laughs> I'm so sorry, everyone. This is the second time that I've done that. Um, so now you should be seeing the map. Um, and I apologize if that you weren't before. Um, but we are, as I said, Gen Next Education and the International Knowledge Center. This map just illustrates uh, that point. And we exist because there is simultaneously too much information out there and not enough. Um, and really what that boils down to is they're not being the correct information or the right information. And instead of us being that only resource for you, we want to make sure that we're connecting you back to the source. That source being the universities in the U.S. that you are applying to. So, these are the partner universities that we currently work with. They've made an extra commitment to India and to um, working with us in the International Knowledge Center. And while we will help um, a student apply to any university, we strongly recommend our partner institutions and we know more about them and we know their staff um, and their commitment to India. So for instance, we have today with us um, Adam Parker, who is the Senior National Admissions Counselor at the University of Iowa, seen here with the rest of his team. Um, Adam has five years experience in admissions and has been to India multiple times. Um, and Adam, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to you now. Um, how many times have you been to India? Um, I will be traveling to India for my fifth time this end of January. I'll be visiting Chennai, Delhi, Mumbai, Bangalore, Bhopal, um, Hyderabad. Uh, so it's going to be an exciting time. I always enjoy uh, the food, culture, uh, and my experience in India. Um, and hopefully I can kind of convey the experience that you'll be receiving um, once you attend a school in the United States. Excellent. Well, thank you for joining us, and um, we look forward to your presentation. Excellent. Thank you. Um, so today we're going to kind of walk through what to expect uh, from your daily life at a school in the United States. So I'll kind of be walking through uh, not only your classroom opportunities, uh, but briefly what happens outside of class, since uh, generally that's a big um, question mark. You've never experienced American uh, culture. You've never experienced uh, American education. So, what does what is the kind of the makeup of that? Um, so, what's what's it really going to be like to study abroad? Uh, what's your typical week going to look like, and how much time should you spend in class studying versus participating in social clubs? Um, you're going to be a more successful student um, and enjoy yourself more if you spend your time and energy in activities that matter to you and yourself. Uh, universities in the United States offer almost a l limitless opportunities and resources to help you become a leader inside the classroom and out. Uh, so you want to make sure you're taking advantage of all the opportunities uh, that you do have. So we're going to start. Uh, generally, most of you are thinking when you're coming to educate, get educated in the United States, you're thinking of class uh, and how your education is going to take up a majority of your time. Uh, so how much time are you actually going to spend in class? Uh, generally, uh, most universities in the United States are on what we call a, um, a semester system where most students uh, take uh, classes two semesters out of the year. Each semester is about 18 weeks long. Uh, generally, it is 
require that a student enrolls in 12 semester hours in order to be considered a full-time student. Uh, what is a semester hour? Uh, that's not the normal um, scale that you've been taking in CBSE or CSE uh, or Cambridge system back in India. Um, a, a semester hour refers to a physical amount of time uh, that uh, you are sitting at your desk in a classroom per week. Uh, so generally, uh, you're going to be in class a lot less than you would be in India. Uh, generally in India, you wake up, uh, get to school uh, by 8 a.m., uh, go to class for eight hours, eight, nine hours, and then you have after school activities and you're studying all throughout the night. Uh, in the United States, in college, um, it's going to be a little bit different. So you're only in class uh, usually 12 to 15 hours per week, uh, which is dramatically different. With you, a professor, um, your peers in that class, um, but it's actually recommended that you study for two to three hours outside of class for every hour that you're in class. Uh, so you have a lot more unstructured time in which you'll be able to um, go into other extracurricular activities, whether that's uh, related to studying uh, for those classes since you're required to study. You're only in class 15 hours a week, but it's recommended to study up to 45 hours per week for those classes. Um, so you're going to have a lot of opportunities to apply the knowledge you're learning in those classes to a broad array of um, things. Um, one of those things that you may be able to get participate in uh, are student organizations related to your major. Uh, so if you are interested in conducting medical research, you want to work in the healthcare industry, you want to work in public health, uh, you'll have the opportunity uh, to go conduct research with faculty members in the neuroscience department. Um, you'll be able to do uh, research with uh, students finding cures for um, various things. Um, you'll be able to participate in honor societies uh, within your class. Um, honors programs are offered through a variety of colleges uh, in the United States. Usually it's a collection of high achieving students that have um, not only one-on-one -on -one access to faculty and staff outside of class, uh, but then they'll be able to participate in some of the highest levels of uh, engagement and research uh, on a lot of those campuses. Um, students also will have the opportunities to work for a lot of the um, offices in which their program is offered. So if you're studying psychology, for instance, you want a staff position in a psychology lab, uh, you'll have the opportunity to work in uh, academia, which you're starting to pad your resume um, outside of class as well. Uh, so there's a lot of ways uh, in which you can take your major, what you're studying, beyond the classroom um, and study. So next is kind of employment. I get this opportunity a lot. Um, a lot of students are wondering uh, how often or how they'll be able to work. Um, many students want to continue work to hopefully help fund their education. Uh, here in the United States, most students will come on what's called an F-1 student visa. Uh, the F-1 visa allows uh, international students to work up to 20 hours on, uh, on campus. Uh, so whichever campus you go to, there's going to be hundreds, if not thousands, of student employment opportunities uh, from working uh, within the academic department in which you're studying, um, working for an admissions office, uh, becoming like a tour guide and showing other prospective students around, uh, working for recreation departments, working within housing and dining and food service. Um, generally, students ask me how much money they'll be able to make in these employment opportunities. Uh, most of these positions are paid hourly, um, can range from anywhere from um, $7.25 uh, $7 per hour all the way up to the highest paying job on um, our campus for students, pays about uh, $13 per hour. Um, so if you see uh, you work 20 hours and you do the math, um, generally the amount of hours you work per week is not going to be able to pay for your um, education, uh, but it's going to be able to pay for some of those lifestyle choices. So if you want to go out, um, enjoy a night out with friends, go out to eat, um, generally it'll pay for those things, buy new clothes, um, things like that. When uh, all, Throughout most of the United States this week, it's been quite a bit chilly, so if you need to buy a new uh, coat, you'll have the opportunity to do that. Um, employment also comes in the form of internships. Uh, generally, most students will work 20 hours per week while the semesters are going on, but over winter or summer breaks, uh, they'll have the opportunity to do internships and they can actually work up to 40 hours per week. Uh, this is when a more significant amount of money is able to come in since you're being able to work uh, full time. 
and there's various employers that you'll be actually be able to get a job within your field to see whether that's a field that you're interested in continuing your education in um, or potentially do a full-time offer um, after you graduate as well. Next are student organizations. So many of you in high school are part of a speech club, part of a drama club, uh, part of a theater club, maybe it's a music club, you don't want to start your own band. Um, you'll have the opportunity to do all those things and so much more with it in college. Um, on our campus we have over 550 student-run organizations that range from academic uh, to special interests to religious organizations, uh, political service, multicultural, sports clubs, service, many more. Um, there's all sorts of opportunities. Let's say you um, perform Bhangra. Um, here at the University of Iowa, we actually hosted the National Bhangra competition where there's um, Big Ten institutions from Ohio State and Penn State um, to smaller institutions here in Iowa and Grinnell that actually participated in a, a nationwide Bhangra um, kind of essentially uh, dance off uh, where there's opportunities to win prizes. So it's something that you are able to do kind of now in high school, but you're able to actually get a lot of university funding to do so much more with it. Um, one of the student organizations I was a part of um, in high school helped lead me to my passion for kind of global uh, education. Um, it was a global service club in which um, during my time here in Iowa City we volunteered at a lot of uh, like uh, the Johnson County Crisis Center, the, um, the food shelter, um, various other philanthropic events were here around Iowa City, but then I was able to plan budget and fundraise enough money for uh, six group members to go down to Santos, Brazil to volunteer in an HIV AIDS youth clinic and a youth orphanage in, in Brazil. Um, something that uh, I didn't even know or exist or had the opportunity to be able to engage in. Um, I had the opportunity through my student organization I joined um, to travel the world um, and help uh, in the education uh, process which helped me get into this field of global education. Now I'm talking uh, to you in India. Um, so you really do never know what some of these student organizations can help um, lead in. There's also academic related student organizations. So if you're a student going into um, business and you want to work in Mumbai uh, in the Wall Street of India or if you want to work in New York City, um, there's an investment club where you're actually um, investing your own money and the student organization's money. It's a $200,000 um, investment fund where you actually get to play around with stock options um, and shorts and you'll actually be able to um, invest real money. So when you're going off after you graduate, you'll have real world experience in an area that you want to go into. And so when you walk into that investment banking interview, um, you'll be able to talk about some of those experiences. Um, so there's all sorts of student run organizations that you can get involved in. Um, anything you're doing now in high school, you never have to stop. Um, you just have the opportunity to engage at, in it at so much of a deeper level um, in college. And a lot of students really uh, pair their um, passion or their academic interest area um, with more of a social interest area for a lot of these student organizations. Um, many of you are wondering how you're going to get involved or what, how you'll find out what's out there. Um, every institution that you may attend will host what's called a, an orientation. Uh, so before you even start class, um, you'll come to campus for around a week, um, kind of find out where all your classes are going to be hosted. Um, then there's going to be like student organization fairs where um, other students will be looking to recruit you to their student organization. So it's just as easy as starting a conversation uh, to kind of see what's out there. Um, also within your residence halls, uh, if you choose to live on campus wherever you're going, um, there's opportunities um, or postings, advertisements in all of your residence halls. Um, or the internet in these days and days. Um, a lot of student organizations will actually have their own websites um, or you can log on to the university's website and research student organizations that they do have. So if there's um, a speech or if you're in Model UN or DECA in high school, you'll have the opportunity to research the institution that you may be going to and find out um, whether they have that same organization as well. Um, or if your school doesn't have um, an area that you have um, pursued, uh, you can actually start your own. Here at the University of Iowa, um, a student can actually start um, their own student organization with uh, just four group members uh, and a faculty or staff mentor. Um, it's just as easy as that and then you can start competing for funding to help um, kind of promote whatever organization you um, are looking to start. 
Next um, are fraternities and sororities. This is a little bit of a concept that a lot of students from India um, aren't as familiar with uh, that I personally am a big proponent of. I was a member of uh, fraternity here at the University of Iowa. Um, so what is a fraternity? Uh, fraternity is uh, fraternity or sorority is either a collection of men or women um, who kind of share similar interests or passions um, and kind of band together to both do community service as well as engage socially uh, within the community. Um, so here at the University of Iowa, uh, there's about 4,000 students uh, that are involved in fraternity and sorority life, uh, and they're in, in 52 chapter houses. So chapter houses range anywhere from five members uh, all the way up to the largest sorority has about um, 200 members. Um, and what do you do on a weekly basis? So usually there's a weekly meeting where everybody in the house um, is kind of engaged and you talk about uh, various activities that are happening on campus and how you can get involved. Um, there's dinners every night. Uh, you'll also have the opportunity to participate in a social. Um, so many times on Thursday nights here at Iowa, a fraternity and a sorority gets kind of paired together. So it's a great way to meet um, meet a lot of people very quickly, especially in a new campus. Um, you'll kind of do a social event, so whether that's ice skating, whether uh, this time of year, whether that's ice skating, um, going to a movie, um, or just kind of hanging out, um, there's opportunities to kind of really make friends in a close-knit uh, type environment. Um, but then there's also a philanthropy component of this. So the chapter I was a part of here at Iowa, um, we donate a lot of money to the Holden Cancer Center, Cancer Research Center. Um, so every year we hosted um, a hockey tournament where we were actually, it was the largest hockey tournament in the state of Iowa, um, and we actually raised over $20,000 for a Holden Cancer Research Center, um, which is a pretty cool opportunity um, for those, um, not only folks in the research center to get extra dollars, but uh, we were able to engage in just a fun uh, hockey tournament in order to raise a lot of money. Um, so there's a lot of benefits to joining a fraternity and sorority. Um, I encourage all of you, if you're at all interested, kind of start doing some research on uh, various websites about what fraternity and sorority life is like. Um, usually the first few weeks into campus, you can go through what is called former, formal rush. Uh, and essentially you just walk around to the various chapter houses. They pitch you um, why they're the best house on campus, what they enjoy doing. Um, and then you kind of kind of select which house you enjoy most um, and decide whether you want to try and join or not. Um, so it's a very informal process. Um, you can be as as involved or not involved as you want. Um, I just encourage you, if you're all thinking of it, try it out. Um, it's definitely a fun um, experience that you won't have any time after um, college. Um, and if you don't want to join, only 16% of the undergraduate population here at Iowa, for instance, is a part of Turing Story Life. Um, so if you're not a part of it, uh, it's not a big deal. Um, you don't have to. Um, so. Next, we'll talk a little bit about intramural sports clubs. Um, many of you grew up playing uh, cricket or football, soccer, uh, and you're like, I really enjoy participating in that. I want to play in college. Um, just so you know, there's various levels of competition in college. Um, many times, um, if you're competing for a scholarship, those are extremely limited, um, and very few students get them. Um, so most students participate in what I call, or what uh, universities in the United States call intramural sports. Um, so if you play soccer, for instance, uh, one time a week during the fall semester, uh, the university will actually organize formal games. Uh, so you can form a team with the other members uh, within your residence hall, and you'll actually go out and play a competitive game once a week um, for an hour. So it's not a huge time commitment. Uh, generally, most teams don't practice unless you're on uh, maybe some of the upper levels. Um, so it's just an informal way to get in a competitive spirit, um, keep doing some of those things you en enjoy participating in, um, or if you want to try out a new sport. So in the bottom um, right-hand corner of uh, the slide, you can see what appears to be a few people in canoes um, trying to throw water at each other. This is an intramural sport we call canoe battleship. Uh, so you're actually in uh, a pool and you just try and sink your friends. So maybe there are sports that you haven't even seen or heard of that you're able to participate in, uh, just in a fun social environment. This is a really good way. Um, this week was finals here on campus for students to kind of de-stress. Um, 
if you're in a high strung atmosphere where you're worried about getting really good grades and you just need an hour to kind of relax, um, let out um, let out some of that fun energy, uh, you'll be able to do that with some of these um, various intramural sports. Um, I do want to mention that there are various levels of competition. So if you're not the most athletic person, um, or if you are the most athletic person, uh, you can definitely find camp competition that matches um, your uh, a level of ability. Uh, for instance, I play um, American basketball, um, but I am a very short person, so when I go play, uh, I don't want to play against really tall people, so I play in some of the lower leagues um, and people with similar um, ac or athletic ability as me, and it kind of all works out. So um, there's opportunities to play in all sorts of intramural sports. Um, you can do it outside of class. Uh, it's not a major time commitment, so when you're studying for a majority of your time, this is a, just a fun um, outlet that you will actually be able to have. The next um, are kind of leadership and strengths types programs. Uh, so many of you are looking, uh, you want to go out and run your own company someday or you want to be a manager uh, for a various company. Uh, there's a lot of opportunities for you to actually take academic coursework related to um, leadership, what it takes to be a leader, how others perceive you, um, how to kind of lead. Uh, there's retreats. Uh, the bottom right picture is a program called Leader Shape, uh, where it's a, a week-long kind of immersive engagement opportunity for students to go to over winter break, uh, where generally students will have a three weeks off. These students act, choose to participate in a leadership conference uh, where you really learn a lot about your leadership style. You kind of um, you put out dream goals of what you want to accomplish someday. Um, you kind of make an action plan of what it takes to actually get there. Uh, so you'll be able to practice some of those um, future dream goals and make action steps to be able to do it. Um, so there's a lot of opportunities to engage. Or if you're new on campus, um, there are first year seminars for students that um, talk about what it takes to be successful. So if you want to learn to use a lot of the resources, um, we have a student, uh, we have a first year seminar for first year students where it talks, uh, teaches them uh, how often they need to study most efficient study um, study types uh, as well as how to use the library resources like we have 4.5 million books um, in our University of Iowa library system if you never need a credible source um, we'll teach you how to use the library's website to be able to either find that book or um, read all the articles online uh, which is very convenient to be able to do that uh, as well um, so there's all sorts of forms of um, kind of leadership training that you'll be able to participate in from your first semester all the way up until um, you're kind of graduating. Uh, there's one course that I took called Career Leadership Academy that was actually four semesters long, which is um, two years long, uh, which it kind of goes through your growth and development uh, as a college student, um, and eventually it helps you um, land your first job. Uh, so that goes through workshops, your resume, um, they actually get, allocate you funds to be able to implement um, your own plan for a nonprofit, uh, and then they actually connect you with industry professionals into the academic area that you're going into, um, and your grade kind of is dictated by how well you engage that person and hopefully be able to land a job after um, graduation. So there's all forms of uh, leadership um, opportunities. Next are multicultural activities. Uh, so if you identify um, in any of these areas, there's opportunities for you uh, to engage with like-minded folks. Um, for instance, uh, our students from India, um, a lot of students join the Indian Student Alliance, uh, or if you're just looking for a good uh, vegetarian meal, for instance, uh, you'll have older uh, students from India that will talk through the best places in town to grab a good bite to eat, or if you want to celebrate Diwali, um, there's all sorts of opportunities um, to engage with students from your home country, um, for instance. Um, they also have their own spaces on campus, so if you just uh, are need a little slice of home and you want to hang out um, with another fellow person from Mumbai, for instance, you, you'll have uh, the Indian Student Alliance actually has their own center here on campus that you'll be able just to go uh, hang out, grab a coffee, um, or grab tea, and you'll be able to um, kind of de-stress, especially during times like finals uh, week as well. The performing arts. Many of you play a musical instrument, you sing, you dance, um, or you're in a band. 
Um, you don't have to stop those things, even if you're not going to study those in college. We actually will encourage you to continue participating. Uh, students that participate in the band um, actually ha have um, a higher GPA than students that don't. So if you want to continue that, uh, you can actually get academic credit to be a part of, for instance, like the marching band. Uh, we just built a new $174 million performing arts center. Uh, so if you want to be a, uh, a part or the production crew of a major Broadway act or show, uh, you'll have the opportunity to engage in that. Uh, if you just want to learn a, a new dance, if you want to learn a hip hop style dance, tap dance, ballet, uh, you'll have the opportunity to learn a new style of dance. Uh, there's also student organizations that are related to kind of the performing arts. Uh, one student organization we have on campus is called SCOPE. Uh, they're actually in charge of the university's budget for bringing in musical talent. Uh, so many of you listen to uh, like American music, hip hop, uh, rap, jazz. Um, you have the opportunity to actually be responsible for which artists come and perform at the University of Iowa. Um, Scope has brought in, brought in acts such as Macklemore and Ryan Lewis, Lupe Fiasco, Noss, Damian Marley, um, Iron and Wine, um, Dirk Bentley. So it kind of runs the gamut. You're in charge uh, as a student, so whoever you want to see, you'll be able to bring some of those students on. Um, there's another student organization called CAB, Campus Activities Board. Uh, so many of you are wondering what you do on the weekends. Uh, Campus Activities Board uh, is kind of responsible for organizing various events for our students on the weekends, such as uh, Ruckus at the Rec, uh, where students will take over our uh, Campus Rec Center uh, late night and be able to participate in um, athletic activities on Friday, Saturday nights, and they usually serve pizza um, and have soda. It's just kind of a fun way um, to hang out with friends, to watching movies, if there's any um, new movie release that is coming out, um, for instance, like the new Star Wars movie, uh, Campus Activities Board will actually show that on the on-campus movie theater where students can go to a movie um, for free, which is a cool opportunity. So there's always things to do on the weekends um, outside of studying as well. Um, film and theatrical activities, there's, we also, in addition to major um, Broadway film or major Hollywood films such as Star Wars, uh, there's a lot of uh, independent films that are shown on campus. We have uh, students that are either pr producing their own films, uh, creating their own films, or um, that we actually have a theater on campus that only shows um, independent films. So if you're not looking for maybe those ho major Hollywood shows and you're looking to watch a Bollywood flick, uh, you'll have the opportunity to do that uh, at the Bijou Theater as well. Next, let's talk a little bit about uh, service opportunities. Um, service is a huge component as that is uh, promoted on a lot of camp uh, college campuses these days. Uh, many students want to engage um, by working for Habitat for Humanity, for instance, where you build a home for a family in need, uh, or each student organization will have a philanthropic uh, cause. Uh, the largest student organization we have here on our campus is called Dance Marathon, uh, where they will actually uh, raise money throughout the year to donate to the Pediatric Cancer Research Center, which is the Children's Cancer Research Center. Um, and then for 24 hours, they will just dance and help raise money. They raised $2.4 million for the Cancer Research Center that uh, goes to benefit families who have children uh, that are going through cancer treatment um, to uh, various other student organizations. There's donation book drives, there's donation uh, goodwill drives. Um, this is just kind of a cool way for you to give back. Um, a lot of students have the opportunity um, to give a lot of their time uh, to various student organizations. And a lot of employers really like to see this. Um, so it's a very good way, uh, not only for you to give back to the community in which you're living in, uh, but also when you're going out into the workforce and uh, employment um, opportunities will kind of help present themselves. Um, there's a lot of new companies Th these days, especially new startup tech companies such as Tom's, for instance, um, that have a service component of the work that they do. Um, and I only see that continuing uh, in the future. And finally, um, the place you live uh, will have a huge impact on your first year student experience in the United States as well. Um, 
students from, you'll have the opportunity to live either on campus or off campus. Uh, I'm highly going to encourage you to live on uh, whatever college campus you're able to go to uh, because something you have to realize is whether you grew up um, five, five kilometers from the school that you're going to attend or 5,000 kilometers, uh, you're going to leave those friend groups um, from high school and join new friend groups in college. Um, the best way to make new friends in college is through that first orientation session and the place you live. Uh, so if you choose to live off campus with other uh, students that you knew or grew up with, it's going to be really hard um, to meet new people uh, day in, day out. So I highly encourage you to live on campus. Um, on campus housing is very clean, very friendly, uh, very safe, uh, as well as you'll be able to engage with students with similar interests. Um, many colleges across the United States are having students live in what we call living learning communities. Um, so the place that you live will have an academic component of that living learning community. So if you're a student going into computer science and um, you comes up to your final project and you don't know how to um, finish coding the project that you have, um, your living learning community will have other students that are going through computer science so you're able to kind of bounce ideas off each other. Um, so it really helps um, bring that academic atmosphere all the way home. So um, a place where you're going to be studying very often is the place that you live um, and these living learning communities um, will be able to emphasize that. Many of the living learning communities also will share classes. Uh, at least one. So when it comes to waking up at 8 a.m., you have 25 other students knocking on your door, um, making sure you're going to class, um, make sure you know what the homework assignments are um, as well. Um, so it's just a great way to build camaraderie. Um, many students after their first year will continue to live with members of that floor or first year floor because they really did become um, good friends on campus. Um, so I highly encourage you to live on campus. Um, as well. Lastly, um, these are uh, in kind of in closing uh, some last tips to get the most out of your experience. Uh, if you ask any current student, uh, these um, are many of the things that they say. Uh, get outside of your comfort zone. First thing when you come to the United States, it's going to be dramatically different uh, than your hometown in India uh, or the Middle East. Um, get out of your comfort zone, try a new thing. Um, that's what you're going to look back 20 years after you go to your undergraduate experience and think about some of those times that you tried something new, um, engaged with somebody, weren't afraid to talk uh, to that person at uh, the show. Um, it's a great way to meet, meet friends and some of those friends you'll continue to see all four years um, on your college campus. So um, don't be afraid to start a conversation and meet somebody new. Um, join a student organization pretty simple and straightforward uh, whether it's related to your major interest area or you haven't heard of something and you just want to try something new uh, it's a great way to build your university community um, and who knows uh, what that student organization will do for you um, in the future and that's how I met a lot of my great friends during my undergraduate as well um, attend fair days so there's going to be various fairs whether it's academic or socially related uh, the first one is going to be like an exploring majors fair. So if you don't know what you want to study 100%, you have the opportunity to see what all the majors are at your college or campus. Um, there's going to be student organization fairs. A uh, very important one is going to be the college um, or career fair. Uh, so much like you've had a, a bunch of colleges come to your high school and talk to you about their college or university, um, in college you're going to have a lot of employers come to your campus uh, and talk to you about what their company does uh, and how you could potentially be a part of that. Uh, it's a great way for students to get their first internship their sophomore or junior year um, and then that internship will hopefully land to full-time employment because as a student on an F1 visa you have the opportunity to work in the United States um, for up to a year, year or two after you graduate depending on what you studied during your um, undergraduate degree. Keep doing the things you love from high school uh, while in college. Um, most of you are 16, 17, 18 years old um, and you have very established hobbies, whether that's a sport or drawing or painting. Um, you don't have to stop in college. This is kind of your time uh, to get so much better at that individual skill or art um, and be able to engage with folks that are also passionate about that similar thing. Um, 
the university oftentimes gives you or allocates money to that individual um, hobby or sport, so you actually be able to do a lot more uh, with it than you did in high school. Um, and it, it's honestly some of the students' best experiences in college. Um, engage fully in orientation. Orientation is the week before college actually starts. Uh, this is your first time away from your parents, away from your country, away from your uh, initial friends. Um, so it's going to be a little bit uncomfortable, um, but start to recognize that um, if you start seeking out opportunities now, finding out where your resources are on campus, it's going to make your um, first few weeks on campus that much easier. Uh, so don't be afraid to get out of your comfort zone, talk to that person, uh, find out where your writing centers are, where your math tutorial, mathematics tutorial labs are, your chemistry help labs, uh, your coding centers are on campus. Uh, that will just make uh, those first few weeks in that transition to the United States education that much easier. Um, Participate in fraternity and sorority life uh, recruitment if you want. Again, I talked through kind of what fraternity and sorority life is. Just know um, you have the opportunity to participate if you want, and if you don't want to, um, you don't have to. Um, but I encourage all those students that are at least interested to kind of check it out. Um, lastly, make sure you keep an eye on your email. A lot of universities um, won't be WeChatting you um, daily with updates um, from your professors. Most of them will still connect uh, via email, whether uh, you have homework assignment due or a test coming up. Um, so make sure you're um, mindful of uh, communication styles with um, your university. And that will start all the way from um, right now when you're going through the application process, if you need to submit any additional information, um, to um, this summer when they start sending out um, you know, checklists of what you need to prepare before you board the plane and come to the United States. Um, email is still kind of the preferred way that a lot of colleges will reach out to you, uh, but don't be afraid to reach out to those college campuses. Um, if you want to set up a Skype session with the admissions professional in your area, um, usually they're more than willing to do that, to talk to you and your family to make sure um, you're comfortable with the decision to come to the United States. Um, so that is kind of my presentation about your week in, week out. Uh, there's no one student that is going to be um, identical, so make sure you are listening to yourself and what your passions and interests are, because uh, college is really your time to kind of explore uh, your areas of interest, whether that's academically or socially. Um, be the person that you are, try new things, um, and make the most out of your four years of undergraduate experience, because it really is um, a flexible and fun time. Uh, if you ask any student about their undergraduate or graduate degrees, most students will tell you um, that their undergraduate degrees were some of the most formative, um, fun, um, engaging uh, times of their lives. So um, I envy you for going down this path, um, and I challenge you to uh, get involved at so much of a deeper level. Those students that do uh, get the most out of their experience. So. Hopefully this is fun and informative. I try to keep it relatively short. Um, if you want to reach out to me, um, Evelyn's going to pull up my um, contact information. Don't hesitate to use my email address. Um, we can set up a Skype session if you want to talk about opportunities at the University of Iowa, or if you just want to talk about education in the United States, I would love to. Um, so thank you very much um, on Iowa, and go Hawks. Thank you so much, Adam. Um, I think you did a, an amazing job of, of covering the, all of the different things that students can do once they're on campuses. Um, I think it's, it's worth noting, everyone, that all of the things Adam talked about, um, correct me if I'm wrong, Adam, um, are part of your education. You are not paying, there might be a small fee for like using the rec center, is that right Adam, at the University of Iowa for instance? Can you talk a little bit more about that? And then also this picture that you have at the bottom, talk a little bit more about football games while I pull up your contact information. And then um, folks, really quickly, um, Adam, before you do that, I will just go ahead and, yes, uh, show your contact information. So this is how you can get a hold of us at the International Knowledge Center if you're interested in starting advising. There is still time to apply to uh, universities, including the University of Iowa. Is that correct, Adam? Yeah, so most universities will accept applications. Um, all the way up until uh, March, the University of Iowa, uh, you have up until March 1st to apply. 
You do not need essays or personal statements to apply to Iowa. Uh, we'll admit you based on uh, your academic information uh, thus far. So transcripts, TOEFL IELTS tests, um, SAT, ACTs if you have them. And Adam, are scholarships still available at the University of Iowa right now? They are. Um, something that I'm pretty proud to say is every student from India uh, is eligible for the India Scholars Award. Uh, so there's an automatic scholarship just because you would hold Indian citizenship. Um, but then there's also merit-based awards. So if you're a high achieving student with um, a good CGPA, for instance, uh, or if you have high test marks, um, students have the opportunity to get some pretty high dollar scholarships. So I encourage you uh, to log on to the University of Iowa website um, at uiowa.edu. Uh, and check out some of those merit-based awards or reach out to me directly um, and share your academic information. I could let you know what you may be eligible for. Excellent. Thank you, Adam. Um, everyone, if you have questions, go ahead and type them into the questions section. Um, Adam, before I switched over, I had asked you, I threw a couple of different things at you. Um, but let's let's go ahead and go back to that quickly. Can you talk about um, football at the University of Iowa? Um, and then I have a whole bunch of questions that we want to get to th uh, that are coming through on we on uh, WhatsApp. Okay. Um, so there's 24 Division One sports at the University of Iowa, for instance. Um, Division One sports are like the highest level of competition. So if you think you may compete in the Olympics. Uh, you could potentially be eligible for uh, competition at the Division One level. A very popular sport at the University of Iowa is called um, American football. Um, the bottom left-hand corner, well, uh, was our football stadium. It seats 70,585 people. Uh, so a, a huge part of the fall or your first semester, more than likely here at Iowa, uh, will be fall football games. It's a big camaraderie builder for those students to sit in the crowd and cheer on. Um, the football team. Um, we've been lucky to have a very uh, good football team, so it's been fun uh, to kind of go watch them compete. Um, and then uh, that's just a good way to make friends and bond. Uh, but there are also 23 other Division One sports, so if you like participating or playing basketball or watching basketball, um, you'll have the opportunity to do that. And soccer, swimming, volleyball, gymnastics, and the rest Great. of the game. Um, what is the cost associated with all of these extracurricular activities? That's maybe a better way to phrase the question from earlier. Yeah, um, a lot of universities do a really good job of um, subsidizing a lot of these opportunities that I was sharing. Uh, so like at Iowa, for instance, the only additional cost you would pay uh, would be for football to watch football or basketball games. Uh, football games are about $25 per football game. Basketball games are about five US dollars uh, per basketball game. Uh, but if you want to uh, go and work out at our um, rec center or workout facility, or if you want to participate in intramural sports, um, those are actually uh, the fees for those activities is actually already built into the tuition. Uh, oh, so you're not, paying, you're not paying any additional money to engage outside the classroom. Um, so what about participating in student clubs? Does that cost anything? Um, generally, it does not cost anything to participate in student clubs. Uh, if your student organization does um, its own event, there may be a cost associated with uh, that just from if you need to drive to Chicago or like for instance for me uh, when I had to fly down to Santos, Brazil to volunteer in HIV AIDS youth clinic, I had to buy a plane ticket. Um, so generally there's no cost uh, just to participate in the club or activity, but if you do um, something big or grand, there may be a transportation cost that you may have to pay for. Um, and lastly, so I think a lot of, um, on, on this point, um, talk a little bit more about fraternity um, and sororities, because I think that's a fairly, like, Greek life. Um, isn't something that we talk about as much in India, but I think, as you pointed out, is a an excellent networking um, opportunity. And and you were in a fraternity, as you mentioned. So, can you get can you go back to that topic a little bit more and and um, talk about those? Yeah. So, journey like journey and sorority life uh, is 
it's just a collection of like-minded students that are engaging in something interested. So if you're coming from India, um, there are multicultural um, fraternity and sorority, so um, you have the opportunity to engage in that, or if you want to go into just a general uh, social fraternity, um, you have the opportunity to do so. Um, but every week, uh, as I mentioned, they had kind of a meeting, and then you and your 150 brothers or sisters, um, because fraternities are men only, uh, sororities are usually uh, female oriented, um, you'll have the opportunity to kind of engage in various experiences. So um, like within my fraternity, for instance, there are a lot of uh, my friends that were also in the fraternity that we were all um, studying business together. So when it came to registering for classes, I automatically had five, six of my friends in every, five or six of my friends in every class. Uh, when it came to studying for exams or tests, uh, usually there was an older member in the house that had already taken that um, class. So if I needed somebody to ask questions to, um, there's usually somebody that had that test um, already so I could talk through kind of what I might see on the test or I could get free um, tutoring help, which was nice. Um, and then from a social experience, um, every week there's already an activity kind of planned for me um, where I had the opportunity to meet somebody new or see old friends on campus. Um, and that really helped my network at Iowa because um, Iowa is a larger school. Uh, we have uh, 24,000 undergraduate students. Um, so my first few weeks on campus, um, not knowing a few people to um, at the end of the first semester through my fraternity and sorority um, engagement opportunities, I'd walk across campus and recognize um, folks um, all the time. And that really um, made a bigger campus feel a lot smaller to me. Um, Excellent. Um, can I can I put you on the spot and go to the topic of on-campus jobs? Would it be possible, I don't know if you have access to this, would it be possible to pull up um, the Iowa student job list so they can see what, um, what kinds of things are actually posted to a university job board? Would you have access to that? <clears throat> Uh, and while, while you're looking for that, um, I'm quickly going to mention that when I was working for a university, I was a um, supervisor who hired international students um, for our student ambassador positions. And I can say um, and reinforce what, what Adam was saying as far as um, participating in service learning projects, you know, going and volunteering or being part of students' clubs. That's what I looked for in student resumes so that then they could say that they had a job on campus, um, you know, in my office. That in turn would get them a job um, out in the real world um, once they graduated from, from university. Um, and I've been a reference. I actually just got a call yesterday um, to be a job reference for a student who um, may be working for the federal government here in the U.S. Um, and I've had I've been a reference for students for other jobs uh, for local businesses and tech companies. Um, we even had a student who went on who worked in my office who went on to work for Google. Um, so there are a lot of opportunities, and I think it starts with you volunteering and being part of your campus outside of the classroom, as Adam was saying. Um, so Adam, um, back to you. Uh, were you able to pull that up, or, or I'm sorry, I put you on the spot with You're this. Feel free to throw the screen my way. Um, I'll kind of okay. walk through some of this. Great. Just one second. Let me pull you back up. Uh, and I, I knew you could handle me throwing you a curveball. <laughs> So I'm making you presenter again um, because I think it'll be really useful. Um, we had a few questions come through about this. I think it'll be useful for students to actually see what that looks like. Okay, so the University of Iowa, we have something here. Uh, this is our Pomerantz Career Center. So our Career Center, the center that helps you find a job while you're a student or a career after you graduate. Uh, this is their website. It's conveniently, conveniently called Hire a Hawk. Hawk is our mascot, so it's a fun play on words. Um, so hirehawk.com. Uh, as you can see here, there's the student login page, employer login page, and the alumni register 
um, slash login page. Um, and then all this information about how to go through kind of your job search process. Um, so as a student, uh, you essentially, you go through this time list of um, everything that you need in order to, like many of you don't have a CV or resume, uh, so there's opportunities for you to develop and build and uh, shape your resume so when you're going off and applying for jobs uh, you'll have the opportunity to see what a sample resume looks like potentially. So here's ex student Alex Jordan, here's a sample resume probably from a first year student um, but then you'll be able to kind of develop that and build that out. Um, and then they have walk-in hours. Um, they can. There's here's the spring career fairs. So if you're an engineering student and you want to get a job Tuesday, February 14th, um, there's usually 85 to 100 employers that come just to hire University of Iowa engineering students. Um, but students could go on and search internships, um, career fairs, career like research employers. Um, so there's all sorts of information on here on um, how to go in and research. Uh, many of you, this may be the first time that you're using like a hire hawk or um, website. Uh, so the Career Center actually has walk-in hours where they can walk you through how to effectively use this. Um, I'm not going to sign in right now, but once you sign in uh, as a student, you'll actually have the opportunity to um, narrow your search. So if you're a student going into finance or biomedical engineering, um, you'll be able to research all the companies that are hiring student internships and you can read the job descriptions and see whether you want to apply for that and then actually apply right through a website. So upload your resume, um, any additional information that you need. So um, pretty simple and straightforward to use. Um, everything's tailored to the University of Iowa. Uh, so these are employers that are looking to hire our students. It's just not um, a blank, you know, Fortune 500 company website where you're just uploading your transcripts um, or cover letters into oblivion. This, these uh, companies are looking to hire our University of Iowa students, which is uh, nice because last year there was over 4,000 companies that hired UI students for internships or full-time careers, which is excellent. Oh, well, thank you so much, Adam. I think that's really beautifully illustrates. I've gotten a few um, comments back that, that that's, that's really helpful to see that because we always talk about, you know, the networks that you will build on your campus, right? But actually seeing what that looks like in terms of practical um, application, in terms of uh, a site where people can get a job. Um, and if you can send me that link, I can actually um, include that in the follow-up for students so you can go and you won't be able to log in obviously since you are not Iowa students uh, yet but you can mm -hmm. just kind of browse to see what kind of things um, and services they're offering. Um, Adam, quickly I want to get to a couple more questions. If we could go back to the topic of, in, of inside the classroom uh, you had mentioned that students might be doing um, two to three hours of study time outside of coursework. Um, and so we have a question here, what, what do the hours look like if I am doing engineering versus, versus psychology or okay. another major? Yes. Yeah. That's a good question. Um, so. Okay, so every student, I'm going to start from the beginning because um, it's kind of a complicated answer, but every student has an academic advisor and you're, you're going to work with your academic advisor to register for your semester's worth of classes. Um, most students register for uh, five, five classes on average, um, of which uh, two to three are going to be major specific, so engineering or psychology. Um, Two to three would be uh, general education. Um, so you have, in the United States, we want you to get a well-rounded education. So you're going to take a history, humanities, a social science class, in addition to um, your major-related coursework. Uh, so every major has its own demands. Uh, for instance, like engineering is very math and science heavy. Uh, so depending on how quickly you grasp some of those concepts, 
um, you may have to study more um, or less for a various topic. Uh, mm -hmm. Psychology, um, you have to do uh, quite a bit more uh, reading, but there's also a lot of science that goes into uh, psychology as well. Uh, so it just kind of depends on your learning style. Um, you'll notice as you go through classes, um, you have the opportunity to do a research. Um, there's a lot of metrics online when you sign up for classes about um, kind of workload and how much time is required for that individual class. Um, because if it's like a principles of chemistry class, you're going to be required to study numerous hours outside of class, um, especially before exams. Uh, where if it's an intro to um, intro to psychology class, it's an entry level psychology class. Um, maybe some of those concepts you already took a psychology class in high school, so you are already familiar with the um, topic. Um, so you may not need to study as many hours. Um, granted. These are college level courses, so you're gonna your workload is gonna be dramatically higher than it is now in high school. Um, so you work with your academic advisor to kind of uh, create a course load that's appropriate for you. Um, many of our students from India, um, the CBSE is a very uh, rigorous curriculum, uh, so they're used to a heavy workload. Um, so they're actually in, uh, able to engage in some of those uh, more rigorous courses at an earlier level. Um, so just know that you'll have um, an academic advisor that will help you kind of chart the course, but um, you will be studying for quite a bit outside of your class. Um, and studying outside of class, uh, you still may be um, engaged with a professor or a teaching assistant. Um, they have regular walk-in hours where you can get, uh, if you want to review concepts, you'll have additional opportunities to do that. Uh, or if you form study groups, so they're with other um, participants in that class. Um, so there's always going to be ways um, where you're studying is either with your professor, teaching assistant, or other students in that class to help kind of get some of those answers um, or further develop your knowledge in that given content area. Excellent. Uh, we, I would, there's one more question before we go. We just have a couple minutes uh, left um, and we'll get to that question here. Um, I've put in the, the chat box, and so Adam, I'm sorry you heard me typing here a, a moment ago. I'm sorry if that was distracting. Um, but if you want to register for advising to learn more about the application process, um, you can go to ikcblr.com forward slash register uh, to talk to Adam specifically about registering um, for more information or to actually apply to the University of Iowa. I've put his email address in the chat as well. It's also here on the screen. Uh, next week we will actually not have a webinar because there is uh, the holiday break here in the US. Um, our next webinar is going to be January 7th where we talk about what happens after you are admitted. Uh, what does that process look like? Um, Adam, the last question I have for you is if you could spend a minute talking about, we have a question here from a student asking about the Honors College, which you mentioned earlier. Um, can you do your best to 60 second overview on um, Honors um, and what's the difference between Honors Courses, Honors College, and Honors Society? Go. Um, honors are usually high ability students uh, in the college, so high CGPA in high school, high uh, SAT, ACT scores. Um, so usually high ability students are able to uh, take academic course coursework uh, at a much faster pace or their uh, grasp and knowledge for the concept just goes a little bit deeper. Uh, so usually honors level courses um, will be at a faster pace and go much deeper into the given content area. Um, and you'll have uh, special access to faculty and staff members. Uh, you'll have also have the opportunity to do kind of uh, in-depth research project uh, and apply a lot of that kind of knowledge that you're learning on a conceptual level um, to an actual, actual practice. Um, so that's kind of through some of the coursework. Uh, the college, uh, you're just establishing a network of like-minded students. Uh, so you have the opportunity to live in like an honors residence hall. Um, but then when it comes to um, kind of building that uh, network of friends on campus, uh, that's kind of what the honors college kind of does. Um, then 
ultimately it leads up to graduating with honors, which a lot of our honor students will have first pick when it comes to some of those um, high level um, application methods, whether that's research, um, employment opportunities, those uh, honor students usually have first pick uh, when it comes to some of those opportunities. So if you're at all interested, I usually encourage students to at least check it out. If you qualify, participate in it, um, you can decide from there whether it's for you or not for you. Excellent. Well, Adam, we are at, uh, at our time. Um, thank you so much for joining us. We know it's early for you. Um, everyone, this, this webinar will um, be, it has been recorded and we are going to share that recording um, to you through email. It will also be up next week on our YouTube channel. Um, Adam, thank you again so much and uh, happy holidays. Evelyn, thank you very much. Uh, folks in India, uh, if you are, well, I'll be traveling there at the end of January, so hopefully I'll be able to, uh, you'll be able to put a face uh, to this voice. So thank you very much. Go on. Yes. Have a great day. And yes, we will be posting also information. Everyone who has been on the webinars will receive some information about um, the trips coming up to India and your opportunity to meet U.S. representatives, including Adam Parker with the University of Iowa. Um, have a good night, everyone. Thanks, Ev. You too.